Hey guys. So as you may have noticed, I started uploading short uh, one minute long quick tips uh, on the channel. I think it's a good compromise because uh, like I mentioned already, the problem with uh, long tutorials uh, is that first, well, they take more time uh, than I have and uh, second, most of the stuff has been already covered, especially basic beginner stuff. You can find all of that on YouTube already. Quick tips, on the other hand, are not that hard to make, and I can make them on topics that the community is not talking that much about. Like, for example, most tutorials teach you to use your numpad for navigation. So I thought making a quick tip about that is a good idea to let people know that you don't necessarily have to use your numpad. And you'll obviously see for yourself what works best for you. I gotta say that that's just my own opinion. Everything on this channel is my own opinion. But I didn't like the idea of numpad right from the start uh, when I just got into Blender back in 2011. It was before Pi menus, uh, it was before Quick Favorites. It was literally the only way of doing things. You had to either enable numpad emulation or uh, just rebind. I think it was just a bad user experience decision. Blender has changed a lot since then. It's constantly evolving in general. It gets more user friendly. It offers better workflow for a lot of things. But numpad is apparently something that people just get used to. And so people who are new to Blender and who are trying to learn Blender via YouTube tutorials, they hear press numpad this, numpad that. And they think, well, I don't have numpad on like on my keyboard because maybe it's a laptop, maybe it's just a compact keyboard because they like compact keyboards. So what am I gonna do? I probably should go buy a keyboard with a numpad or like a separate numpad block or whatever. So yeah, the problem is just that for some people it's just not a conscious choice, that's it. As you can see in this scene, as always, uh, I'm not... Uh, I'm trying to not focus too much on individual objects, and I'm focusing on the scene as a whole. I don't really care if individual assets are any good, because I'm not trying to make an asset pack or anything like that. I'm just trying to make a one nice render. Well, one small animation, to be precise. Uh, whatever I'm modeling, I'm trying to finish it fast. I'm not really patient enough to spend uh, several days on just one thing. So basically, I'm always speed modeling. I'm always trying to find ways to optimize my workflow. I like to look back and think about what could be done better, what could be optimized. Time lapses are actually a good opportunity for me to do just that. This video is sped up uh, seven times. I cut out some parts uh, with UV unwrapping and uh, vertex color assignment because those get kind of repetitive and uh, would be boring to watch completely even in a time lapse. But overall the whole thing took about 5 hours. It was finished in one stream, which is honestly kind of an achievement for me because uh, like I mentioned already, I'm not uh, this is not what I do for a living. Uh, this is just something that I do in my spare time. And also, I'm still very new to Substance. I've been using it for just uh, about a month, uh, I think. I've never been able to make a whole scene of any complexity uh, with uh, textures in just one stream. So I'm making some progress, which is nice. And it's also nice to realize that there is still a big room for improvement. So I can get more efficient and do it even faster. I'm trying to fill the scene with uh, basic shapes first because at this stage I'm not even sure what objects are gonna be there in the final render. I don't have any concept or any sketch for this uh, or anything like that. I'm just making those decisions as I go. I'm basically sketching in 3D. As you can see, as soon as I was done adding uh, all of the objects into the scene, I set up a camera to understand uh, how much screen space all of them are gonna occupy in the final render. And I'm also setting up lighting early on, even before I'm done uh, modeling. Because like I already said, there is no like uh, separate decision-making phase. There is no concept for this, uh, I'm just making decisions uh, constantly as I go. And so there is no way for me to know in advance uh, what objects are gonna be well lit, and what objects are gonna be in the shadow. 
if something is barely visible in the final render, there is uh, no point in putting in a lot of detail in it. But also, to be honest, it just gets boring uh, to do one thing after a while. And if it gets boring, then what's even the point? I mean, if you can have fun doing something, why, why not have fun? Switching activities a little bit can be refreshing. Uh, if it wasn't just a speed modeling exercise, then if it was uh, some project that I wouldn't be able to finish in just one sitting, I would probably start texturing early on as well. As you can see, I'm using a lot of lights in this scene because uh, I want a lot of contrast and I want it to look cozy. I think lighting is a lot like painting, actually. For example, I put the area lights near the cubicle walls just because I wanted to have some nice gradient on them. And all of the other light sources, especially the small ones, are there because I needed some gradient or some highlight somewhere. I don't necessarily care if they make much sense uh, logically. Uh, some people asked me how I uh, come up with ideas of uh, what to model. I just uh, keep a list of those. Uh, you don't usually come up with ideas on, on the spot, if ever. It's usually something that you've seen in a movie or like a game or while uh, walking in a park. So when I see something that I think would be called to model, I just put it on the list. But to be honest, I feel like sometimes people uh, overestimate the importance of uh, the decision of what to make. You can make a rock look interesting if you put it in an interesting situation, maybe add ice to it to make it sentient or something like that. This cubicle that I'm making could be 10 different things. It could be a modern cubicle, it could be a happy cubicle, it could be a cubicle of a person on the verge of suicide. It could be a crunch cubicle with like 10 Red Bull cans. You can tell different stories by just adding different details and uh, having different lighting. I decided to go with this cozy retro vibe. People like retro stuff because it reminds them of um, simpler times. Or it's uh, at least associated with simpler times. In reality, of course, nothing was ever simple. In the moment, it, it never is. To people back then, the world was just as complex and convoluted as to anyone now. In hindsight, everything is obvious and simple. In 20 years, today's world is gonna seem pretty simple. So at this point, I'm just finishing uh, modeling. It's probably my least favorite uh, stage because by this time the whole scene is pretty much figured out now, uh, apart for like colors. And it's just a matter of going through the routine of making objects uh, look finished. There is nothing creative about it. Here I am adding some bevels uh, to objects as well. It's mostly for lighting. Because in substance we'll add additional bevels uh, with uh, curvature, with just color. But when you have additional geometry on your edges, there's a higher chance that light will reflect off it. And you will be able to see some nice rim lights. I'm trying to add bevels via modifiers whenever possible, because that way uh, unwrapping becomes really easy. You just mark sharp edges, and that's it. And with bevels, well, you don't have sharp edges, so if you have bevels directly in your mesh, you will probably have to mark them manually. If you're using a bevel modifier, it will obviously preserve uh, the seams for you and uh, will give you correct UVs. I honestly wasn't sure if it would work with uh, substance, but I tried and it did. And it doesn't matter if you export uh, with applied modifiers or without applied modifiers, it works all the same. So the UV unwrapping is pretty straightforward for most of the objects. I'm just uh, selecting all of the sharp edges and marking them as seams. Uh, keep in mind that if you have any objects, any meshes generated from curves, like if you converted a curve to mesh, your mesh already has uh, proper UVs. All you have to do is to just go to UV view and uh, click mark seams from islands. 
I'm using a V Packmaster add-on for packing. It's not free, but uh, it's the best one that I found. It packs really efficiently, it fills in all of the holes and stuff like that. As I already mentioned, I cut out a lot of uh, footage uh, with UV unwrapping and um, uh, Vertex coloring for IDs in Substance, which is what I'm doing right now in the time-lapse. Uh, because those things are really repetitive, it's mostly routine, especially UVs. With uh, ID maps, there is a little bit of um, decision-making involved. Like, for example, it helps uh, to think of what uh, elements can potentially have the same material on them. But it's definitely not required, because in Substance you can assign the same uh, layer stack to multiple ID groups at once. And it's relatively easy to do so as well. For this scene I'm using a single 4K texture set for everything. In Blender it's a single material for all of the objects. Because it's a relatively small scene and um, it's not gonna be a 360 animation. In fact I removed the back faces on the cubicle walls and on the floor. Because if I didn't uh, those would take up a lot of texture space obviously. Uh, this stage, uh, like coloring stuff uh, in substance, I gotta be honest, it's one of the most challenging ones for me. Just because there are so many colors to choose from, you know. It takes more creativity, it has huge impact on the result. And I feel like gathering um, a good library of smart materials or swatches is not gonna be that trivial. Uh, like, of course, some of them will be reusable. Like, chrome is the same chrome anywhere. Wood color can be reused for my particular style and some other things. But then I feel like in each scene there will be a lot of uh, very unique colors. Like, the PC color in this scene is a very unique tint of beige, right? You would probably never have that in swatches unless you're like specializing specifically on retro tech. You would have to color pick it manually. And I feel like there will be a lot of things like that. This is just me thinking out loud on what to optimize. My workflow in Substance is to just uh, drag the base material, which has just a layer with a color channel and 90% um, roughness, and a separate layer with a curvature mask for edges. And that's it, there are just two layers there. I found that it's uh, what I usually need for the most materials. If I need a gradient, and I usually use gradients for larger objects, I have a separate gradient smart material that I put into the base group. And that's it, that, that's the whole workflow. That is all that I'm doing over and over again for different objects. Add smart material, tweak color, tweak curvature settings, and that's it. Now I gotta be honest, Substance Painter is very slow for it. It takes some time for it to think after you click on layers. And for someone whose whole workflow is based on clicking on layers, that's quite annoying, I'm not gonna lie. Substance has a lot of things going on for it. Performance is not one of them, sadly. I'm not quite sure yet what I'm gonna do about it. To be fair, I'm not really sure that there is anything that can be done about it. But we'll see about that. I'm kinda used to working around limitations of whatever it is that I'm dealing with. It's just how it is, there is no perfect software, there is always something wrong with it, you know. <coughs> Apart from Blender, of course. But yeah, the good news is, it's being worked on. Like, for example, just recently they improved uh, the performance of uh, thumbnail generation in the assets, so it's not taking an eternity anymore. Uh, for all of your alphas to load, for example, which is really good. For the floor pattern, I decided to go with uh, something subtle and conservative, because it's a retro office after all. So these dots is the best thing, the most fitting thing that I could find. To send FBX to Substance and to load textures uh, from Substance back into Blender, I'm using custom Python scripts, because there are just a lot of tasks that need to be automated. 
It's all part of quick menu add-on that you can find uh, on my Discord in the QM channel. In Blender I make some last tweaks to lights because uh, they were not powerful enough uh, for dark textures to my taste. And to make the camera rotate around the scene I'm using a simple driver expression. It's something that I discussed in the driver expressions quick tip video. This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching it till the end. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.